What's up everyone? We are now seeing the US inflation rate now trending at around 4.98% which you can see here. And this is a significant improvement from where it was at its highs of 9% in June of 2022. But despite what seems like good progress and the actions of the Fed appearing to be working, unfortunately, we are still way off the first 2% target. And worse still is that there are other dynamics in the economy which indicate that we have an even longer journey to go. And according to Federal Reserve documents released last week, the fallout from the US banking crisis is likely to tilt the economy into a recession later this year. Which doesn't sound good at all. But why is this important? As we know, during the times of economic growth, a country's gross domestic product or its GDP, which is the total value of goods and services produced will increase. But if this GDP falls for two consecutive quarters, it is defined as being in a recession. And so recessions form part of the natural economic cycle of expansion and contraction, but the one we are almost certainly entering will be caused by falling real incomes, as high inflation is hitting our pockets driven by the rising borrowing cost. And so what this really means from an investing position is that, if consumers like ourselves can't afford to change our cars or buy new EVs anymore, then those companies' sales or earnings will go down and so will their stock prices. And if they need cash to invest, borrowing at higher interest rates will become even more painful for them. And we are seeing this right now with big names like Lucid and Rivian and even Tesla who are reducing their vehicle prices in order to woo consumers. And so whilst on the channel we've been very bullish about the EV transition, we still remain bullish but we shift our focus on long-term opportunities which are going very cheap right now. So much patience will be required in this space. And so in this video, I share with you what this really means and 4 investing strategies which you can do right now as we head into a recession environment. So make sure you stick around to the very end so you do not miss out on what risk management actions you may need to take for your portfolios right now. And also please drop me a comment below on what recession proof strategies you are already considering. And if you want to get ahead with your investing in this recession environment and invest like a bull, you have to sign up to Seeking Alpha who have gone a step further and are now offering a groundbreaking 58% off and a 7 day free trial period once you sign up to their premium plan. So instead of a $239 annual plan, you now get that for $99 only which is a whopping $140 off giving you back even more money to put into your investments. And so with Seeking Alpha, you also get a one stop shop market platform where you can track and manage your portfolio and get the latest data, tips and predictions all at your fingertips. So whether you're looking for the latest market news, trading analysis or trending analysis or want to get the latest on top rated growth dividend of value stocks, they've got it right there for you already analyzed and ranked so as to make your decision making much easier. And you even have stocks and ETF screeners so you can narrow down and create your own shortlist of winners with long term growth potential. So make sure you check them out from a link below for this exclusive 58% discount and 7 day free trial period. Which is a real win win opportunity here if you want to move the down your investments in 2023 and beyond. So thank you very much and with that out of the way, please drop a quick like on the video and hit the bell so we can get talking about the minutes from the Federal Open Market Committee in March which included a presentation from staff members on potential consequences from the failure of the Silicon Valley Bank and other mayhem in the financial sector which began in early March. They said given the assessment of the potential economic effects of the recent banking sector developments, their projections at the time of the March meeting included a mild recession starting later this year with a recovery over the subsequent two years. Whoa, what a long period and would that mean no growth? I feel not at all but that's where the strategic choices which you make for your portfolio will come to pay off long term. They said projections following the meeting indicated that Fed officials expected GDP growth of just 0.4% for all of 2023 with the Atlanta Federal Reserve tracking a Q1 gain of around 2.2% but that would still indicate a pullback later in the year. And that financial crisis now has now caused some speculation that the Fed might hold the line on rates but officials stressed that more is needed to be done to tame inflation as officials ultimately voted to increase the benchmark interest rate by another 0.25% which was the ninth increase over the past year and that brought the Fed's fund rate to a target range of 4.75 to 5% which is the highest level since 2007. And so even with all the actions taken so far, 
they still recognized that there was significant uncertainty as to how those conditions will evolve as the markets have baked in another interest rate rise in May. So even more pain ahead. So bearing that in mind, here are four investing strategies for you to consider as we head into a recession. The first being to diversify your portfolio. And this is diversification across a range of asset classes such as equities, property, bonds or commodities as well as different sectors for equity investments. And this is useful because it can smooth an investor's average returns if one or more particular asset classes or sectors are underperforming. And as we already mentioned, recessions are all part of the regular economic cycle. So for long-term investors, the hope is that you've already got a diversified portfolio going into the recession. And secondly, is to increase your exposure to defensive sectors, which include businesses like consumer staples, food, drink, personal care products and financial services and utilities and these typically tend to be less vulnerable to falling demand during a recession. And the more resilient parts of the markets also include non-cyclical businesses such as defense and healthcare which are heavily exposed to the government spending and in the case of defense which has a multi-year order book. And the third opportunity here is to reduce your exposure to cyclical sectors. So investors may want to consider reducing their exposure to businesses selling non-staple discretionary products which are likely to be hit by the current cost of living crisis. And this includes consumer discretionary stocks, including auto manufacturers, including EVs, which we spoke about earlier, airlines, non-essential retailers, and also the property sector, which is looking at the steepest contraction over the next two years since the early 90s, with declines of 10 to 20% being forecasted. So if you think about it, given the environment we find ourselves in, most families will be seeking cheaper holidays or even delaying the purchase of a new car until interest rates are lower. So our current ways of living by default would give us pointers as to where we invest. But having said that, I feel that there's one exception to the consumer discretionary sector which you need to be aware of which is the luxury goods sector. And as you can see from this example on the luxury goods sector, where whilst others are seeing declining sales, they are seeing exceptional years. And when you kick the tires on the sector, you will see what opportunities exist there. And some examples here include Hermes having an exceptional year after strong demand from China with a 23% jump in annual sales. And same story here with Louis Vuitton, buoy by China, even as their sales slowed down in the US, with them seeing a 17% rise in annual sales. Similar story with Ferrari raising their outlook after a record-breaking 2022 driven by demand across the Americas and China as they struck off the economic downturn, as they saw a 73% growth in China and 22% growth in the Americas, which is all very exciting. I personally own two of these stocks in my portfolio and have seen consistent periodic growth. And so before anyone says the growth is coming from a lower base as a result of China lockdowns, I'll ask you to think again as this headline here from Harrods in the UK sums it up very nicely that the rich get richer in a recession. And one of the trends we are seeing is that people are going for more and more and more premium items. So clearly an area of consideration there. And the final consideration is that investors may seek to focus on protecting their capital by investing in cash and bonds rather than looking for returns on higher risk equities. Cash can go down in value in absolute terms, but in the current inflationary environment, we tend to lose value in real terms by holding cash. So a better proxy here for cash could be investing in gold. And this is as for a long time, gold has been considered a store of value. As there is limited supply, which means in theory, it has a minimum value and it is unlikely to go to zero. So some very, very interesting insights here was considering as you prepare for a mild recession, but only consider getting into any of the investments if the price is right for you and if you fully understand the risk. This video is not financial advice, a buy or sell recommendation but it's meant to bring some new and exciting insights to your attention for you to do your own research. And as always, I'd love to hear from you. So please let me know your thoughts on these top sectors covered in the comment sections below and what other sectors are catching your eyes lately. And if you're new to my channel, please ensure to subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please check out this video right here or this playlist right here to watch equally insightful content from the channel. Thank you so much for being here and I look forward to having you in my next video. Thank you.